Um, I'm really new to this. I'm new to NASIS, so um, you can beat me up outside later if I go over. Um, and I have a lot of questions. Uh, I'm Tim. I teach interior design at VCU. Um, the interior design department of Virginia Commonwealth, sorry, uh, University exists within the School of the Arts, sharing a building with the departments of fashion design, graphic design, photography, and cinematic arts. This location is not lost on our students nor the faculty. We encourage our students to explore outside confining boundaries that one might associate with interior space or, our, or uh, generalizations of interior designers. We do not educate students on drapes, doilies, and we cringe when we hear the words, or the, uh, uh, when, when we hear HGTV mentioned in class. <laughs> um, our students often take outside electives in the craft and material design, ooh, ooh, come back, uh, in the craft and material design sculpture and uh, sculpture departments and have easy access to cross-disciplinary training. So here's some things that we're doing and I'll ask some questions a little bit later on on some things that we are not quite doing yet. Uh, our university and surrounding neighborhoods uh, gave rise to icons including local logistical creative Henry Box Brown, who mailed himself out of slavery, vaudeville dance artist Bill Bojangles Robinson, outer planetary scum heavy metal band Guar, uh, and if you... Uh, that's all I'm going to say about Gore. I would not go to their website if I were you. Um, uh, they, they were VCU alum, though. We'll give them credit. And uh, forward-thinking jazz artist Butcher Brown, their latest album, Solar Music, just came out last week. It's really, really good. It's a double album. You should go buy it right now in just a few minutes. Um, we are engulfed by creativity. VCU's location in Richmond, Virginia, the former, former Civil War era capital of the Confederacy provides substantial opportunity to document a changing narrative within our city and our region. Purpose of this presentation is to provide insight into our pedagogy as it pertains to student-driven cartography projects and to ask input from you, experts in the field who, sadly for us, don't work in our eclectic building. Our lovely urban campus neighbors a historic and largely residential section of our city named The Fan. Its streets radiate out between two principal arterials that cross the James River, our largest natural resource, and a principal player in our city's existence. Typical buildings in this neighborhood were built in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The most critical street in the fan is Monument Avenue, whose string of, as the late comedian Robin Williams called them, Confederate second place trophies, <laughs> were removed and their sites replanted after months of civil occup occupation and protest. Uh, their removal had been discussed for decades, but serious consideration gained momentum after uh, the violent and deadly Unite the Right rally on the nearby campus of the University of Virginia and in the city of Charlottesville in 2017. In Richmond, monument removal was considered in part due to lengthy and healthy civic discussion, including a well-received dialogue opened by VCU School of the Arts multidisciplinary and community-minded Middle of Broad or Mob Studio. The General Demotion, General Devotion competition provided a platform to envision not only why the monuments had become important in Richmond, but also what legacy the removal would create within and far beyond our city boundary. Mob Studio is open primarily to interior, fashion, graphic, and urban design students and led by faculty from associated departments. It is at once community and participatory design, and when they don their hand-painted Tyvek work suits for a neighborhood outreach intervention, people take note because it's really hard not to notice them. Mob shares space with Storefront for Community Design, a nonprofit that bridges a gap between those in our community who have traditionally not had access to design resources as they navigate city planning, property laws, and economic development. The Valentine Museum, focusing on Richmond's, texture, Richmond's textured 400-year history, partnered with Mob and Storefront for the competition. While not purely a mapping exercise, the General Demotion, General Devotion competitions over 70 submissions looked at the monuments from a civic perspective, that is the physical delineation of Monument, Monument Avenue's Confederate statues created during the Jim Crow era. Our city's perception of them had shifted from reverence to a spectrum between heritage, uh, embarrassment, and outright anger. 
Designers were asked to consider what next for the avenue, not only as statue sites, but within a linear park-like conversion. The competition was funded by, the, an, by a national endowment for the arts grant and sought not to provide a redesign, but instead to open a box of what ifs. One of the winning entries by Shane Neufeld and Kevin Kunstadt from Brooklyn used research points gathered from, there's a lot of numbers in here and each one of these numbers uh, plays a principal part in their design. Uh, you can probably put together what these numbers are. Uh, took research points gathered from transatlantic slave trade databases to position 12.5 million points of light. That's 12.5 million points of light, right? Uh, within 86,000 bronze plates embedded in the avenue's sidewalks and the 4,000 linear feet between the two of the principal monument sites. So that's number of enslaved Africans, number of slave ships, right? Uh, at least from the databases that they were working with. Uh, the existing monuments would be melted down to provide bronze for each plate. Their entry included a tower to elevate visitors so they could see the points of light from an aerial perspective, while a subterranean gallery anchored the tower and provided pedestrian access uh, under a busy thoroughfare. It should be noted that Black Lives Matter protesters in the wake of the murder of George Floyd provided a boost to the Monument Avenue redesign as they were able to bypass the typical city of Richmond permitting subsequent to committee review and city council approval by removing the statue of Jefferson Davis in a less than curated but still largely appreciated effort, mostly at night. The Jeb Stewart, Stonewall Jackson, and Matthew Fontaine Murray statues were soon removed at the direction of Richmond's mayor in July 2020, as those were on city property, and the Robert E. Lee Memorial, owned by the Commonwealth of Virginia, was removed in September 2021. The competition, while not directly responsible for the uh, removal of the monuments, uh, marks the largest map included endeavor within our school. Richmond was also known as the Harlem of the South for a long time, uh, particularly because of one neighborhood uh, called Jackson Ward. Through their work with the Patterns of Place program, the Interior Design Department's Emily Smith and Dr. Sarah Reed asked VCU art student participants to document motifs or patterns along Richmond's Second Street, at one time the cultural heart of Richmond's African American community. The project documented Second Street block by block using photography and later charcoal sketches. Two gridded visual maps were constructed on parallel walls within the studio for reflection and discussion. Perhaps the most telling portions of the parallel maps weren't what was included, but what wasn't. Gaps within the grid provided silent commentary on the portions of the once wildly animated area, uh, but now it's bisected by an interstate, an expressway, and several buildings that neither serve street life nor promote or engage the neighborhood. For a third year project, students explored mapping with a political and narrative purpose with Dr. Robert Nelson from the nearby University of Richmond's Digital Scholarship Lab and the process his research group employs to create their multi-layered maps and infographics. He outlined the output his team created on topics including food deserts in our city and the links between red line neighborhoods and urban heat island effect impacting these communities. Students were encouraged to look into identity as shaped by geographic location, the Pacific Northwest Macaw Nation's existence ties to the sea, the Bedouins the desert, the high quality of clay makes the pottery industry of Seagrove, North Carolina robust. The crossing of the Appalachian Trail over the Nanhala River and a few intrepid 1970s canoeists spawned the outdoor recreation-based hamlet of Western North Carolina. The third year cohort worked on maps relating to a non-digital sojourner traveling through an industrially altered landscape by analog propulsion. Basically, I was sick of uh, all the students staring at their phones, and so I asked them to put them down and pretend that they had to roller skate uh, 50 miles to the next town, and what would that look like? And they took that idea and totally unplugged the circuits of my brain and plugged them back in in different locations with these crazy projects that they came up with. It was great. Uh, if there was a AAA for people who walked, sailed, cycled, or canoed, how would you entice them to travel and experience uh, another area? The intent was to open the door for a conceptual map, perhaps not confined to the boundaries of a known world, maybe playfully, maybe playful, certainly with a level of, I don't fully understand this. And hopefully the map required us to lean in a bit, maybe put on our glasses, at least ask questions to fully grasp the intent. 
The student uh, maps investigated an earthquake, a galaxy far, far away, a desert city from an online game, the kingdom of Game of Thrones, maybe you know that one, I don't, the best ski slopes in Aspen, a metro map of cultural identity, and an overlay, this one was great, an overlay of the battle plan for Normandy onto Bedford, Virginia, a nearby town who within 15 minutes during the invasion of Norman Normandy lost 19 of its young men. That's pretty crazy, in 15 minutes they had I think it was their whole football team was gone, right? Anyway, that student broke down crying in the middle of his presentation and not because he was being uh, critiqued. And we were starting with a roller skating sojourner and that's where he ended up. It was pretty powerful. Um, I'd like to talk about two of those projects a little more closely. Ken Trong's Guide to Cultural Limbo explored his experience as a Korean American, a member of two nationalities, but not at home entirely in either. His map, based on a topological transit map, navigated a metro area with six topic lines whose termini served as a scale of judging multi-ethnic existence. Ken evaluated tradition between adherence and abundance, uh, sorry, between adherence and abandon, family between devotion and ambivalence, cuisine between ritual and takeout, expectation between merely living and excelling, consumerism between waste not and why not, and a language as a rapid transit line with varying stops of translation. The assignment required a three-dimensional component uh, and Ken's metro route revealed nodes of elevated limbo in its traverse. Uh, the student's work plan typically includes 75 to 90% ideation and 10 to 25 cent uh, percent of the time working with his hands. It should be noted that this three-dimensional map was begun at 10 p.m. the evening before the deadline. <laughs> Jillian Wong evaluated a, tw uh, a 2011 earthquake centered outside nearby Mineral, Virginia. Uh, by researching number of local calls to report the quake's occurrence, property loss records, emergency personnel response time, and seismic scale. She used uh, points to elevate the county representations in the map using a series of colored wood dowels, each uh, their own language as well. Uh, I'm gonna skip this project and I'd like to go into this one. Uh, second year student Andrew Greider presented a map for enslaved Africans escape after a visit to Hearth Memorial to the Enslaved who built the College of William and Mary. That's a new monument at that university. If you're not familiar with it, you should check it out. It is not a statue, it's, a, it's an object. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Andrew's narrative exercise began with a laser etched and shell map on brick that could be placed within flooring of a place only visited by the enslaved, perhaps a privy, a kitchen, a workroom, a place where navigation could be memorized in plain sight. Andrew is an upholsterer by trade and sewed a representation of the region with red don't go here thread epicenters. His thought was that if the escaped African were to be caught, then it would be better not to share a safe destination. The swatch of fabric wrapped a handful of hush puppies that could be pitched to barking dogs who might alert a plantation owner at night. And you might be able to detect that there are some grease stains on the fabric. He, he brought in hush puppies that he'd bought that morning or the night before. And I have this in my office and it still stinks like grease. Um, inside the swath, a hidden, head, uh, uh, sorry, a hidden set of forged ownership papers offered a layer of insurance for the track. This project was Amazing, and um, we made the mistake of not recording it while he was presenting it. Um, in the future, that would be the, the way to do it. Uh, so here's what we'd like to do. We complement our campus's urban setting with a study away program on Virginia's Eastern Shore for two weeks of the summer. Students participate in exercises that look at the, cultu uh, at the cultural environmental shifts occurring along the peninsula and series of barrier islands as a result of rising sea level and climate change. This program has taught, uh, been taught in association with the Patterns of Place project that I mentioned before. While the textural and phenomenological output from these students is both robust and deeply insightful, we'd like to also pursue cartographic output of this program, especially within a land region whose return to the water is happening more quickly than some. What we're not doing but would like to do, we're a school of the built environment largely concentrating on interior architecture and space forming. Aside from typical building plans, static maps themselves, we're not fully harnessing the process of diagramming a place three-dimensional with a physical sort of tangible result. Mm -hmm. Is there a point that a physical 3D map becomes a sculpture? What projects or programs might you have in your toolbox that have approached cartography from a tactile perspective? And what research or artistry should we be looking for inspiration? 
Finally, last little category, what we don't know we should be doing but would likely like to be doing. I have no idea. Please, uh, please let me know, and I'm glad to take your answers. Thank you very much. Thank you.